Hi, Kitten. Hi, morning, Daddy. That's good timing. I have her almost ready for you. Oh, Kelly? Mason? Thank you, Mary. I think I'll be able to do the rest. Okay. Remember, don't overdo. I promise. Honey, we've got the limo downstairs. You want to ride down with us? Oh, no, thanks, Dad. Uh, I guess I should have called first. Joe's going to come by and drive me to court. Oh, well, that's all right. I, I should have known that you want to drive down with Joe. You two have been working hard trying to find out who really killed Jenny. Yeah, and we're going to find out who did it, too. I just hope it won't be long before we do. Look, I want you to give me an update on who you suspect and everything that you've learned about the case. Will you do that? Oh, I'd be happy to. Are you comfortable? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, by the way, when are you going to see Peter? You, you said that uh, he implied he had more to say to you. Yeah. Daddy, I know he saw more in that study that day with Channing. More than he's told us so far. I will never understand why he has kept quiet so long. When he knew decisively that uh, Perkins was innocent. How could he let a man suffer for five years for a crime he didn't commit? Mm, some people can. Some horrible people. But listen, I'll let you know anything I find out, okay? And, and I'll tell the police, too. But first, I want to get some details from Peter. And uh, once I've done that, I intend to tell everyone I know. I only want to borrow it for a couple of hours. You won't even know it's gone. It's private business. I'm not going to steal it. You don't trust me, do you? It isn't a matter of trust. I may need a car in a hurry. Okay. Forget it. Just just, just forget about it, okay? Don't be so hot-tempered. You can have the car if you need it, but bring it back soon. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I'll, I'll bring it back in a couple hours. I wouldn't have asked if it wasn't important. It would break. Yeah? Uh, before you go, I, I want to give you something. What's this? It's called an airline ticket. Yeah? One way to Las Vegas. Are you giving me half a holiday, or are you firing me? I'm sending you back to that horrible racetrack where I found you. Why? You leave me no choice. I asked for a decision. You haven't given me one. You mean that business about whether I was willing to start managing your stock portfolio for you? That's right. I thought you said I had a few days to make up my mind. You shouldn't need a few days. If you can't recognize a golden opportunity when one comes your way, you're not the man I thought you were. If I decided to stay, you'd have to tell me the whole truth. No. If you stay, you take whatever comes on faith. No questions asked. You have until tonight to say yes or miss the chance of a lifetime. Don't be late. <laughs> you want to make sure you get good seats. Joey, I don't think there's such a thing as a bad seat in this. Yeah, well, there better not be. I'll see you there. <laughs> Morning. Hey, hey, congratulations. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. Listen, come on in. Come on in. Okay. Uh, Yo, is that your car out there? Uh, yeah. For the moment. <laughs> what is this? I thought I'd take Whoa. your uh, mom and sisters it's to the courthouse. Uh, I certainly appreciate it. Listen, I'll see you, you there. It. <laughs> Bye. Oh, God, that's pretty. Yeah. Uh, is that really for us? Yeah. It's the car I usually drive for Mrs. Lockridge. She uh, oh. graciously allowed me to borrow it. Today. Well, all I can say is I hope all the neighbors are watching. And can we honk the horn all the way down the street? Oh, yes. <laughs> can you please? <laughs> Greg, that's a really sweet thing to do. Thank you. It's my pleasure. <laughs> so, uh, where is Amy? Oh, Amy's right over here. But uh, I'm afraid I'm not going with you. How come? Oh, I'm feeling terribly. I, I don't know. I, excuse, I'm coming down with the flu or something. You're kidding. Uh, what about the, the tickets to the play tonight? Oh, I know. I'm really sorry, but uh, I don't know that I'm going to be feeling up to it. Amy, it's good for you to get out and get some fresh air. Maybe it's good for you for me to get out, huh? Oh. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to try to feel better by tonight. Huh? Okay. Okay. Try to feel up to it, all right? I want you to come right. here today. I, I will, if I can. Really, I promise. I want to pay you for the ticket, though, so you're out any cash. No, come on, that's not the point. Hey, I brought the rolls. <gasps> let me see, let me see, let me see. I wanted to impress you. Oh, you did. Mm. I'm going to watch you all drive down the street and be very impressed. Terrific. <laughs> mm. Okay, you. Okay. You take care. We won't be gone long. 
Okay. You know how happy I am for Joey? Yes. Please forgive me for not going. I just, I've really got to rest. It's okay. Well, uh, we'll see you guys later. Uh, well, I'll call you later. Please do. Ladies. So, I probably made a mistake anyway. There's nothing, there's nothing to panic about yet. Is there? No. What I need is some professional help, some uh, paid for reassurance. I'd like to make an appointment with the doctor uh, as soon as possible. Today would be terrific. This morning, now would be fine. Uh huh. Yes, it is an emergency. Uh, I'd like confirmation of a home pregnancy test that I took myself. Yes, it was, but I'm sure I made some mistake. Um, no, I didn't repeat it. Thank you. Great, terrific. Yes. What time can she see me? Ooh, it's pretty good at this. Mm. In a day or two, I'm quitting this job, right? Right. How's Peter? Have you heard? Uh, they say that he's still on the critical list, but apparently his condition is stabilized because he's seeing visitors. Good. I want to see him. Right now? Yeah, right now. Joe, can't we wait till we get back from court? Because I want to talk to him then, too. Nope. It's only take a minute. I want him to know where we're going. You're going to have to stay on that IV for some time, Peter. I know it's uncomfortable, but there's medication running through there that's very important to you. More than important, vital. What are you giving me? Uh, it's lidocaine. Uh, for one thing, we use it to prevent a regular heartbeat. Remember, you went into cardiac arrest on us. And there's other medication in there that help regulate your circulatory system. Without any of them... Uh, I get the picture, Doc. I want you to be careful. Don't let that needle fall out of that arm. We don't want to lose you again. Yeah, I guess I'm pretty lucky. Thanks. Just read it. Okay. Excuse me, Doctor. Could we speak with Peter for a minute? It's all right with me. It's all right with him. So, sure, why not? All right, go ahead and visit with him, but don't make it too long. Okay? Hi, Kelly. Peter? Well, you certainly make a handsome couple, I'll say that. Mr. Capwell, can you give us a statement on the hearing this morning? I'm always happy to see an innocent man cleared of false charges. But you prosecuted an innocent man. Aren't you kind of left with egg on your face? And what are you going to do about finding the real killer of your brother? We begin the investigation over again. Next question. Do you really believe Perkins is innocent, Mr. Capwell? There's no question about it. We have a reliable eyewitness who has cleared him. There's no need to answer for me, Mason. Ladies and gentlemen, there is something I would like to say. Joe Perkins is a fine man who has been unjustly maligned. Throughout his ordeal, he has been stalwart and courageous and has always maintained his innocence. Today, that claim is finally being vindicated, and uh, there is no one happier than I am. Weren't you and your family convinced of his guilt? Yes, we were. And in that respect, I am grievously in error. I, I admit that I had a closed mind to the subject, and obviously I was never more wrong about anything in my life. Because of my misguided certainty, Joe and his family have suffered immeasurably. Today, I am as much for Joe as I was against him five years ago. 
And I can say categorically that I know of no one that is more worthy of being called a hero. He has persevered against all odds and won. You feel the same way, Mr. Capwell? Well, yes, of course. My father speaks for both of us. Yeah, there is one more thing I would like to say, if I may. This is a, a very happy day for my daughter and myself, naturally, but I think it is particularly joyful for Jill's mother and sister, who just joined us. Please, Mrs. Perkins, come over and join me. As most of you know, this is Joe's mother and sister Jay. And I want to say to them how happy I am that Joe is finally being vindicated. It just proves once more that justice in our country is a fact and not merely a word. Are you getting out of here, Kelly? No, only for a couple of hours. Joe's going to be officially cleared this morning. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Listen, Peter, um, I'm going to come back here when it's over, and I'd like to talk to you again. Yeah, I'd like to talk to you too, Kelly. Peter, I need some more information about that night in the study with Channing. Is that all right if we talk about it? I'll tell you what I can. I want to thank you for telling the truth about that. In spite of everything that's happened, I appreciate it. You don't have to thank me. I didn't do it for you. I did it for Kelly. Everything I've done all along has been for her. I'm sorry things worked out the way they did. Yeah, we, uh, we really had something going, didn't we? Well, the doctors say you're getting better. Maybe. Even if I do get well, they're going to lock me up for trying to kill Joe here. Isn't that right, Joe? Yeah, that's right. Sure, sure. I stood by and let you go to prison. You loved me, didn't you, Kelly? Even if you don't now? You did for a while? Yeah, for a while. I tried everything I could to get rid of you. Put cocaine on your motorcycle. I tried to kill you. I just couldn't let you come between Kelly and me anymore. And in the end, you gave me my alibi. Yeah, I found out. I couldn't have Kelly. There's no way. Kelly, I always loved you. All I ever wanted to do was take care of you. No matter what anyone says about me, I want you to know that. I do, Peter. So now you chose. Listen, I'm kind of tired. You guys. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be late for your own resurrection, do you? Listen, I'll be back later. See you then. So long, Peter. Take good care of your purpose. I will. I'll wait in the hallway. Thank you, Brick. I'm sure it won't take very long. Whenever. Thanks. Yeah. What happened to your family? Well, yes, Mrs. Perkins. I just wanted you to know how much I appreciate what you just said to the press. But it was very generous of you. I was sincere about it. It means a great deal to all of us that you feel that way. I'm sorry I haven't had the opportunity to express my condolences on your husband's death. Thank you. It came as a great personal shock to me. He was a fine man. Yes. Well, I know he always admired you. I remember... I gave John his first job in Santa Barbara. Yes, he told me that many times. I know he would be very proud of his son today, as I'm sure you both are of him. I'm so relieved Joe's been exonerated finally of that terrible cloud hanging over him. <laughs> hey, Joe, what are your plans now? Well, what happens next? I haven't made any real plans. This is all happening kind of suddenly. What about wedding plans? You have made those, haven't you? Well, we've been talking about it. What do you say, Miss Capwell? Can't you give us a date? No, I'm sorry. We haven't set a date yet. But you are going to get married, aren't you? You bet we are, just as soon as we can. 
Looks like we're going to be united by matrimony. They do sound happy, don't they? How are you, honey? I'm fine, Daddy. I'm not tired at all. Do you think we're going to be starting soon? Uh, we're just waiting for the judge. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Jade. How you doing? I'm good. I'm glad to see you. You're okay. Glad to see you out of the hospital, too. Well, I'm not out yet. I'm just on a pass. I have to go back after I... Oh, that's over. right. Joe told me I forgot. Well, I hope you do get out soon. Oh, Kelly, you really are looking well. We yeah. were so worried. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Perkins. <laughs> Does look great, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mr. Capo. Yes. Judge Culper is ready if you are. We're ready. Thank you. Everyone. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You can see it. Ready? I declare the session in order. Let the records show that Mason Capwell, the assistant district attorney and petitioner, is present. Others present for this hearing are Joseph Perkins, Marissa Perkins, Jade Perkins, Kelly Capwell, and C.C. Capwell. I have read the motion and the supporting affidavits filed by the district attorney's office. Does anyone present have anything else to add? Your Honor, in um, light of new evidence, our office feels that a great injustice has been done and accordingly, we ask that the criminal conviction of Joe Perkins be vacated and the record expunged. I agree with you, Mr. Capwell. From the evidence presented, it is apparent that a grave injustice has been done here. And I certainly see no need for deliberation in this case. I would, however, like to add a few words of my own. Mr. Perkins, the judicial system does its very best to see that Justice is fairly and impartially meted out. But like all things man-made, the system is uh, not infallible. The case at hand represents a tragic miscarriage of justice. And I know of no way to compensate you for the time you have lost in uh, personal freedom. And each of us has only so many years of life allotted him, and not one second of that should be wasted, much less five years. I only hope that the years which lie ahead of you are productive and happy ones. I sincerely wish you the very best of luck, Mr. Perkins. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Capwell, I would uh, admonish your office to exert every effort to uh, find the real murderers and to uh, bring that person or persons to uh, speedy justice. Now, if there's no further business, I declare this hearing closed. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you. Mr. Perkins, for not giving up, for persisting until your innocence is proven. For examples like yours, it gives others hope that they can, too, fight for their legal rights and know they can win. Oh, I hope so. Oh, listen, I, I want you to meet my sister, Jay. Hi. And this is my mother, Marissa. Pleasure, Mrs. Perkins. I know what a happy day this must be for you. Thank you, Your Honor. And this, this, this is my fiance Kelly Capwell. I do? could never have made it this far without her. <laughs> Dad, uh, what are these marriage plans that Joe and Kelly are talking about? It's the first I've heard of it. Planning a formal wedding, home, and a church? What? Nothing has changed, Mason. What do you mean? I mean, I wasn't going to allow Kelly to marry Joe Perkins five years ago. And I'm certainly not going to let it happen now. I can recommend the article on endocrinology. It's fast-paced, hard-hitting, full of raging ambition and smoldering sex. Well, I'll be sure to steal this when I leave the office. Thank you. All right. Mrs. Andrews, I can confirm for you that what you came up with was the right answer when you tested yourself. You mean I, I really am pregnant? That's right. Two and a half months. Oh, no. I'd hoped that was news you were waiting for. I don't know whether it is or not. I've just, uh, I've been in kind of a fog all day. I presume your husband will be equally surprised. I'm not married. Oh, I understood my nurse to say Mrs. Andrews. In fact, that's what she typed on your file. That's what I told her, but, uh, I'm not married and my name isn't Andrews. I see. Uh, I had, I... I was engaged at one 
time. All right, I thought I was where I expected to be. I, I don't, something I guess I don't really need to go into right now. You don't have to. But you might feel better talking to someone about it. I have a great deal of experience, and I might be able to give you some useful advice. I'm certainly not going to judge you. Oh. Well, I, uh, it's not much to talk about. I'm, I'm unmarried and pregnant. That's about it. Do you have someone you're seriously involved with? No, not even that. What about the baby's father? He left me for another woman. I see. It's pretty... Old story for you, I guess. No husband, no boyfriend, no job, no prospects of getting any of them either. What about your family? Do you have a family? Yes. Uh, mother, sister, brother. My father died in the uh, earthquake. I'm sorry. How do you think your family will react? Oh, how will they react? Probably uh, about like the earthquake. Uh, I'd say a uh, 7.8 at least. <laughs> I see. <laughs> oh, no, they're really good people, really. I, uh, I just, this is something I don't want to talk to anybody about just now, not even them. Do you plan on having the baby? Uh, and if you do, do you plan to keep it or put it up for adoption? Oh, doctor, you're asking me questions that I have no answers for. I've only found this out today. I... I can't think. I don't mean to pressure you, but if you're considering abortion, you're going to have to make up your mind rather quickly. Time isn't on your side in this. Well, I'm real sorry, doctor. I haven't made any plans. You know, I'm a brand new unwed mother statistic. Please just give me a break. Of course, I'm sorry. It can be rather a jolt. I'd uh, really like to thank you for seeing me on such short notice. You're welcome. Yeah. I'd like to help you if I can. If you have any questions or you want someone sympathetic to discuss alternatives with, please feel free to call me. Will I, you? Sure, I guess I will, yeah. I'm sorry, I can't talk to you anymore. Joe, I would like to help you if you would let me. Help me with what, Mr. Capwell? Oh, find you a good position. Like, um, maybe start out on the oil rigs in the ocean. I'll uh, talk to the union, see if they can find you a spot. Might be the start of a new career for you. Might find yourself on the way to a top job in the company. Thank you. I appreciate that, Mr. Capwell, but I think I'll find my own job. Well, not everyone wants to be in the oil business. I can understand that. Um... How about if I offer you some money to get you started? Maybe $10,000. Could you use that? Again, thank you, but I don't think so. There's nothing demeaning about accepting help, Joe. Everybody has to do it at one time or another. I never wanted anything from you, Mr. Capwell, except Kelly. Now, I don't know if you got the impression somewhere along the line that I was trying to get into your good graces and trade on Kelly's affections, but I want you to be sure I'm not. I never wanted that, and I still don't. You should have accepted my help. <gasps> Not talking about the weather. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Hi. Hi, how are you feeling? Oh, not much better. Oh, honey. Why don't you just go on up to bed? No, I'm, I'm a little too restless for that. Don't worry about me. I'm going to be okay. Well, I'm hungry. Anybody want a sandwich? Well, uh, no. I think I'll have a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, now about tonight, what time do I pick you up? Oh, Brick, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to go tonight. I, I'm just not going to feel up to it. I think it's more than you're feeling sick. I think something's bothering you. Why do you say that? I don't know, just an impression I get. Vibes you're giving off. Am I right? Partly. Oh, I thought so. So tell me, 
What, what is it? Come on. Let's break. You're mighty intuitive. Well, uh, I don't know. I, uh, got a call from a certain friend of mine, a, a real estate broker, and it just really upset me. Yeah. I think it's more than that. You're not leveling with me. Yes, I am. Amy, I can see it in your eyes. If you want to know, you're the absolute worst liar I have ever come across. Maybe that's why I like you. I don't like people that are good liars. I wish you wouldn't be quite so sure of yourself, you know. I really did get a call, and I, I really am very upset about it. And that's the reason you've missed your brother's day in court, and you're going to pass on the play tonight? I really am not in the mood for a play tonight, Brick. I'm sorry. I wouldn't enjoy it. And I, I have the flu, and I am feeling really, yeah, really you, bad. You know, if you don't want to go out with me, all you have to do is say so. You don't have to scramble around trying to make up a lot of phony excuses. You know, I can handle the truth. It's the lying that I can't take. So listen, you're off the hook, okay? Forget tonight and forget about me too, okay? Bye. Getting a cold, I hit the feathers and drink lots of fruit juice. Come here and sit down. What? What? Well, I thought you and I don't have that much occasion to talk. We could have a conversation. About what? Well, about things, you know. You, uh, you having fun? Yeah, terrific. Still seeing Danny? Danny is just a friend. There is nothing serious between us. Okay. I did see this hunk at school, though, and I wish he would notice me, but I don't know if he will. Mm. So, uh, what are you doing about this cold? I don't think it's a cold. I think it's more of a depression. Amy, don't be depressed. Go see a movie or something. That's what I always do when I feel sort of down. The most important thing is not to sit in this house and just veg. Okay. See a movie, hmm? Yeah. Good advice. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay, you two. Now, I can't decide whether to make pheasant under glass tonight or spaghetti. What do you think? <sighs> spaghetti. Well, I can't because I have a date. And that oh. is if I can find my blue angora sweater. You did not send it to the cleaners, did you? No, I did not. Why, can't you find it? No, and I've looked everywhere. Well, if I can't find it, I'm just going to have to kill myself. That's reasonable. She has such great energy. Was I like her when I was her age? No. I'm going to see if you have a temperature. Oh, I don't think I do. What was I like? Well, pretty much as you are right now. Shorter and younger. Younger, but not young. I don't think I've ever been young. Amy, I'm worried about you. I really think you do have a cold or something. Why don't you go upstairs to bed? And I will make a bowl of my famous soup and bring it up to you. I don't want any soup. I don't want to go to bed. I'm not coming down with anything except maybe a galloping depression. Well, what are you depressed about? I don't know. Everything. Nothing. Maybe you're just bored. You know, maybe what you need is to get out of this house and go do something. There's a... I don't know, there's even a church social or go to a movie or something. I don't want to go to the movies. I don't want to go to a church social. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just been a rotten day. Mama, I, uh, I went to see this doctor today. I knew it. I knew it. You see, you're not well. Now, what did the doctor say? She said that I, uh, nothing, nothing. I don't know what I'm talking about, really. I'm just, I'm not making any sense at all today. I'm fine. Uh... I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go on up to bed. So 
you're really leaving. You finally made up your mind without so much as a word of goodbye. There's a note in my room. That was hard enough without facing you. I don't understand you. Have you no sense of adventure? No gumption? N are you afraid to face a challenge? That's not the point, Mrs. Lockridge. Then what is the point? You wouldn't understand. Is it because you despise the rich so much that you can't bear to handle their money? No. Then what is it? It's because I've had it with not being told the whole truth. You keep things from me. People lie to me. I've had it. I'm sick of it. Find yourself another dirt racer to push around. Take care. Brick, no, 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 don't go. Brick. Brick, come back. Don't go. Brick. Warren. Hidden. Someone. Someone go after him. anybody else. It has to be him. Oh, I've handled it so badly. Now I've lost him. Kelly, where's Joan? He's gone. Why? What do you want, Mason? I want to know if you two are going to testify against Peter. We haven't talked about it yet. Why? Because it's important that you do. We can't just let him go free after he tried to gun Joe down in cold blood. Look, Mason, I'm going to rest for a little while, and then I'll go see Peter and talk about the whole thing. I think you ought to remember that he saved my life when I was kidnapped, not to mention saving a million dollars. I think that ought to be put in his favor a little bit. We'll consider it in mitigation, but he still has to be punished. Well, you're a great one for wanting justice for other people, aren't you, Mason? Well, look, I'm really tired right now, but it's been a wonderful day for me. Being with Joe and hearing him being exonerated finally and proving that you and Daddy were wrong about him, about everything, and knowing that I am going to have the pleasure of turning you into the authorities for having suppressed evidence that could have helped him. That's what I think justice is. He uh, came back to bring us back. Jay left it in the car. Thanks very much. Please come in. I'm, I'm sorry you got so angry this afternoon. Well, I guess it doesn't matter now. Along with the sweater, I've come by to, to say goodbye. Goodbye? Yeah, I'm heading for Las Vegas. Las Vegas? For, for how long? For good. I'm leaving Santa Barbara tonight. Wait a minute, I don't understand this. Wait a minute. Why are you going away? I mean... Are you trying to tell me you're, you're not coming back at all? I don't have any plans to. Well, what, what happened? Why so suddenly? I don't know. Beginning to have second thoughts about it. They're not very serious ones. Look, I, I'm going to go, okay? Wait a minute. No, please don't go. Don't go, please. I'd like to talk to you. I mean it. Okay, for a minute. Okay, listen... Any of this has anything to do with an argument we had today, I want you to know that, that the only reason I couldn't see you tonight was for a purely personal reason. It had nothing to do with you. It, it's just because I couldn't tell you about it. That's all. Yeah. And I figured I blew up over nothing. Uh, I felt pretty bad about it later. I really like you, and I would, I'm going to miss you terribly. Um... Are you going to take a, a plane or a bus or... Uh, I got a plane ticket. If you wouldn't mind postponing your flight, I'd love to take you out to dinner. We could have just a, a farewell meal, you know? I don't want us not to be friends. Really? I've just been in kind of a, a strange place lately, and it has nothing to do with you. Just nothing at all. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I've just been difficult. I really, I really do like you. You do? Well, I like you a little, too. So you want to uh, postpone your flight? I don't know. I was uh, thinking about it. 
Maybe I should put it off for a couple of days. Really? Yeah. Great. Look, I got something I got to do right now. Will you wait for me? Yes. I'll be back in a, in a while. Okay. Then I'll take you out for a big dinner. Okay. It's the best way to cure a cold. Mason, I'm kind of tired. I have to talk to you before Kelly comes in. Is she back? Yeah, but she's resting. Hearing over? Yeah, a long time ago. Oh, our local boy makes good at last. Peter, I have to ask you something. What? When you talk to Kelly, take back what you said or tell the truth. Don't ruin me. You know then that I can't. You can destroy me. You could make me lose my job at the DA's office. I could be disbarred. It could cost me Santana. You could turn Kelly against me for the rest of her life, not to mention the rest of my family. My, my, my. It's quite a lot of power to have over someone. It's almost as much power as you had over me at one time, isn't it? For the love of God, Peter, don't be vindictive. Whatever I've done to you in the past, I'm sorry for, but none of it ever did you any real harm. As you call humiliating someone every day of his life harmful, Mason. It's a petty grievance and you know it. Grant you, we never liked each other, but I never tried to destroy you. But you kept threatening to try. And whenever you had something to hold over me, you never let me forget it. I'm begging you, Peter, don't do this. Well, I'm sorry, Mason. But I'm going to proceed. In fact, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't tell everyone that I saw you in that room. It would serve no purpose. But it would make me feel good. But that's what I need right now. In fact, Mason, I, I think I just might have to go all the way and tell them I saw you kill Jenny. Peter, listen to me. I'll do anything. I can give you a great deal of money. Enough for you to go away and live comfortably for a long time. No, I think having this kind of power over you is a lot more important to me than money right now. Yes, but once you use it, it'll be gone. You can only damage me one time. But if you take the money, you'll have security for years to come. Hey, you do have a point there. But, no, Mason, I, I think revenge is a little too sweet. In fact, I think I might. Kelly, I'd like to talk to her. Okay. Mrs. Lockridge! Ma'am? Mrs. Lockridge! Mrs. Lockridge! Yes? What is it? I've changed my mind. Here's your plane ticket. I've decided to stay. I see. But it'll have to be on my terms, understand? Um, I'll uh, negotiate. I'm willing to take on the family investments, the ones you want me to take, but only under certain conditions. Go on. I don't want anyone to know what I'm doing for you. As far as I'm concerned, or anybody, I'm strictly your driver. And any stocks I buy or sell for you will be done in your name. No, that won't do. It has to be. No, I want Lionel to know that you're in charge. I want him to be afraid that you're going to take charge of the Lockridge family fortunes. Then it's no dice. Give me the ticket. What makes you think you can have everything your way? Because this affects my life, and I have a right to call the shots. Now we're going to play by my rules, or we don't play at all. No one dictates to me, Brick. Well, I am dictating to you, Mrs. Lockridge. Take a letter. Goodbye. Brick. Brick, wait. Not your way, not my way, but our way. 
That's more like it. Now I'm going to go and wash the car like a good chauffeur who handles limited stock portfolios. I win yet, Rick. You'll see. Listen, Peter, I've got another proposition for you. No, no, no. Don't waste your breath, Miss. The whole world needs to know the truth about this. It's not the truth, and you know it. You're lying. I'm not lying. You're the one who's lying. I'm not going to let you do this to me, Peter. You're not going to destroy everything I've worked for all my life. I'm somebody now. I've got power. I'm not going to let you take that away from me. Do you understand that, Peter? I'm not going to let you take that away. 